Good morning, everyone. And thank you, Kelsey, for that amazing intro to WASM Day and um, what all of this is about. Now, I am not entirely sure where I fit on the spectrum, Kelsey um, explained, because I, I think I have to talk to him more about what all of this means exactly um, to, to fully understand it. Um, and it's kind of interesting. The schedule says that I will talk about new foundations for um, building software. But this is a keynote, and I have five minutes. So I'll not actually talk about anything really foundational. That doesn't make sense. Instead, I will talk a bit about the why. Why do we need new software foundations? But even that would blow way past five minutes. So I will focus on one specific reason one that none of us will be able to afford to ignore. Now, as reasons go, this, I admit, is kind of on the big side. And it's also a bit of a strong claim. But then again, I think you all of, uh, all of you really kind of know this to be true. And luckily, we have a shield against this. Almost all software whether open source or commercial, is provided under licenses or EULAs that try to minimize or, where possible, exclude any sense of warranty, any fitness, fitness for purpose, any security, and so on. But this shield, it's going to go away. Both in the EU and in the US, there are legislative initiatives that make it so that all of us will have to take a lot more responsibility for the software we are shipping. Not to put too fine a point on it, would you be willing to bet, let's say, 15 million euros on the security of your application? Or if you work for a very large company, maybe billions of dollars of your revenue every year? I don't know, but that, if the EU is having its way, with the CRA, the Cyber um, Security Resilience Act, that might become a bet you must be willing to make. Now, this is all in flux, and we'll see how exactly it shakes out. But one thing does seem pretty clear. This provided without warranty, that shield, it's not going to last much longer. Now, a lot of, a, a lot's being done to address the security of our applications. Impressive amounts of resources are poured into securing the supply chain, which is certainly a good thing given how good we've become at reusing code. And our industry wouldn't be remotely as productive if we hadn't developed amazing ways to do that. I'm a bit concerned about the significant increase in cost that all of this entails and that it might actually slow us down. But let's say it works out perfectly. Let's say all of our supply chain is magically perfectly secure. We can kind of forget about it. We still have to contend with that remaining bit of code, the code that our teams write themselves, our first party code. That code is very often written by domain experts who have deep expertise in a specific field, but not necessarily all the expertise required to build a larger application, to make it secure, to make it reliable. If you allow me the admittedly bad analogy for a moment, let's compare building an application or a process to building a house. Imagine the person installing, I don't know, light fixtures, painting the walls, setting up a piece of furniture, would also have to know a really large amount of information about structural engineering or locks or plumbing. Because just in the course of doing what they are doing, of, of rolling out a carpet, they could accidentally make the building collapse. Or they could make it so that the lock to the front door is trivial to open. Or, well, you get the picture. That is sort of the situation we have with how we build software, where the units of isolation are so broad that we have these really diverse teams with really diverse sets of expertise 
building pieces of functionality that are all put together into a unit of isolation, can all affect each other, and can all make it so that, for example, the security of the application is fundamentally um, uh, uh, impinged. Um, now, even if we could hide behind the shield, there's no workroom to provide a shield. I think we should fix this. I think we should improve on it, but we should do it in a way, as Kelsey said, that makes it so that we can continue developing with hyperproductivity, that we can take the millions of developers with us and their languages, and that we can migrate to gradually. Otherwise, it will not work. We cannot rewrite the world. I helped found the Bicode Alliance, and I work at Fermion because these organizations are really focused on one possible answer, the component model, and I believe that we have the right answer to this. I believe that we can fix these issues and do so in a way that increases productivity instead of increasing costs and has all kinds of other nice properties. If you want to talk more about all of this, then find me and my colleagues at the Fermion booth throughout KubeCon or also um, at the happy hour we are uh, hosting with Docker tonight. But right now, I don't even want to sell you on any specific solution. I mean, I haven't tell, told you what the component model is at all, so I'm not doing much selling here. Instead, I wanted to drive home this point that there is something that you just cannot ignore, that nobody can ignore here. We have to fundamentally change how we build software. But also, I do want to encourage you to just focus on just absorbing all the amazing stuff you'll hear about today and the cool and fun things people will present. And I hope you have a fantastic Wasm Day and a great KubeCon. Thank you.